Hello, my name is Roger Adams. I'm making this screen share to show you how to upload new ONC lectures to a course site's uh, course. So, uh, going to assume that you have downloaded the ONC lectures and have a archive like so. Uh, the first step will be to unarchive it. So, on Mac, uh, you can just double click it. It'll use the system or the operating system to do so. On Windows, uh, it's pretty much the same thing. Um, go ahead and on archive it, you'll be presented with a folder. Uh, it's component uh, number and unit number. So we'll go into that folder and find the relevant files that we need for our course. And in this case, we are looking for the zip, the MP3, the PowerPoint slides, and the audio transcript. So sometimes it's easiest just to go ahead and get rid of the other stuff so we know exactly what we're working with. So now that we have these, we will go ahead and log into our course, like so, coursesites.com, the login button up in the top right, and I've already got my information logged in here. And we are logged in. Um, sometimes if, if this isn't showing up here, this is the course that you're a part of, you can click on the top part up here and it will show you the courses you're signed into or a member of. We'll go ahead and click HCA Health IT. And now are we, we are in the course screen as if we are, since edit mode is on, we are a teacher. So what we need to do is we need to get these files into the course content collection. So down here in the left menu bar, we'll click content collection. We'll click HCA Health IT, or whatever the name of your course is. Uh, so we'll start with the flash lectures. The easiest way to do this is to create a folder that we will put them into. So click the create folder button and then under the folder name we'll just name it component x underscore unit x. You can name it whatever you want. I just use this naming method and submit. So our folder is created now. We need to find, scroll down and find it. Here it is. Component x unit x. And what we're going to do here is upload a zip package. Uh, since we've got our flash lecture here, it's already zipped up for us. This came out from that original zip as you saw earlier. And what we'd like to do is upload this zip and then it automatically unarchives it into the folder which we are using. So go to Upload, Upload Zip Package. We're presented with a screen where we can select the file, where to find it. And in this case, I have it... Uh, got it on my desktop here. So, I'll select the zip file. It's about 5 megabytes, so it might take a moment to upload. Now that it's selected, we'll just hit submit and wait for it. Once it's successfully uploaded, it'll automatically unzip it into the folder. So, it's, it's pretty convenient. Makes it very easy on us, rather than uploading uh, one file after another. Almost done. Alright, so we can see that it's now uploaded here. It's about 5 megabytes. And we can go into into the subfolder and confirm that it is in fact there. And here it is. Uh, we can even click it and test it and make sure it works. Welcome to Introduction to Which Information. It does. So now that we've got that, uh, we've got that all set up. Now we can go ahead and add it in. So we'll go to Content. And let's just pretend we're going to add it to Section 1 here. Um, Wherever you need to put it, just go into that subfolder. And now that we're in this subfolder, uh, section one where we'd like to add our lecture, we'll go to Build Content, and we'll go to File. So we'll go ahead and title this lecture, um, Great Lecture. And we will find our file using our content collection, Browse Content Collection. From here, this should look familiar. It's all of our content collection uh, materials we've got. So we'll scroll down, we'll find that folder, component x underscore unit x. Um, go into the folder that it was just created, and we will select player.html. If we want to make sure it's the correct one, you can click it here as well and confirm. It just loads it again. In any case, uh, you select the radio button to the left here, and then you go down and you hit submit. 
So there's a couple options we want to ensure are correct here. Uh, specifically, we want to ensure that give users access to all files and folders in the folder. So that player.html file will be able to access all the subfolders within the folder that it's contained. Uh, it just allows it to function properly. Without this selected, it would not function correctly. And then another feature I think is beneficial to have selected is open in a new window. If you don't do that, the lecture opens in a much smaller window and it uh, makes it somewhat cumbersome to use. So opening in a new window just adds a new tab where the user can use it in a full uh, size, uh, the size of the browser. So now that we've got that, we'll go ahead and hit submit. And our lecture is created. Uh, it'll automatically add it to the very bottom here. I've already got a lot of content here, but here it is. Lecture, great lecture. And uh, we can see, you can go ahead and click on it. It opens it in the new tab as we had specified. And it loads. Welcome to Ready for Use. To information and um, should you need to change anything, you just hover over this. And you've got some options here. You just go to edit. And it's the same screen. You can retitle it or you can change the file, whatever you'd like. So, pretty straightforward, that's how you add an ONC lecture. Um, one note I will say is that some of the uh, Flash lecture zip archives, um, they, they can change a little bit in how they're unzipped. So, the file you'll be looking for is either index.htm or player.html. As long as you select one of those, there will only be one. Um, it, it just differs a little bit based on which school actually produced that lecture for the ONC. So in any case, if there's an index.htm, use that. If there's a player.html, use that. So now we'd like to have uh, these accompanying files accessible. Say the user would like to access whether it be slides, uh, the audio on its own, or the transcript. Perhaps they want to follow along or they're hearing impaired. So we'll go back to our content collection and go to our course, HCA Health IT. After that, I found it easiest um, to create, I've already created a folder here, but if, you, if you've not got one, so you're creating a new course, um, I just create a folder called Files. And as you can see, I've already got all the relevant files, um, the transcripts, uh, audio, slides, uh, uploaded for all of our lectures we've got. Um, if you need to re-upload these, that's fine. Um, you would go over here, and I find the easiest way to make this happen um, instead of uploading the files one by one, it can be awfully time consuming, I like to select them all and compress them, put them into a zip archive. Uh, you can name it whatever you like here, I'll just call it files. Um, and we've got an archive that we can upload now and it makes it much easier on us uh, for uploading the files. So in this case I'm just going to make a folder called temp and this is where I'm going to store these. And again we will go to upload zip package We'll select our file. Here it is, files.zip, the one I just created. And we will upload it. Again, it'll just take a moment. Uh, you can upload them one by one, say if you have a you know single file that needs to be updated, perhaps the, the transcript changed, and you you would just go in, you delete the old one and re-upload it. Uh, just a single file. This is still uploading, it's a little bit larger, so it'll take a moment. <clears throat> Almost there. So again, it's automatically unarchived it. Because I created it with Mac OS X, sometimes it'll have this folder here. You really don't need it. You can leave it or you can delete it. It makes no difference. It's just metadata used by the operating system that's irrelevant for our needs here. So we've got our files here in our files temp. Uh, so let's go ahead and create the content uh, in the course. We'll go back to content on the left hand menu. And we're just going to use section one again, since that's already where we have our lecture placed, down towards the bottom here, great lecture. And we will go to build content, and we will go to item. So from here, you can title it whatever you'd like, slides, transcript, uh, audio for great lecture. So we've got our title now. You don't need to give it any sort of uh, text or description here. You can if you'd like, uh, and all the other ones I've not. And we will go to Browse Content Collection. 
from here we will scroll down, select our files, uh, excuse me, oops, go into our files folder. From there we'll go into that temporary directory that I created. And here's our three files that I had just uploaded. So we'll go ahead and select each each of them and submit. So you can see it's now created them here. And we can it automatically gives it the name of uh, the file. So we'll just go ahead and retitle them. I just make it easy, make it transcript for transcripts, audio for audio, and slides for slides. After that, we are ready to create it. Um, there's really no extra uh, options or anything you need to adjust. And hit submit. And we'll go ahead and scroll down to the bottom here. And we can see our slides, transcript, and audio for great lectures right here and they are all available for download and use however the user may see fit to use them. So that is all the ONC material. Um, the ONC materials they may come as mp4 files as well in which case we can still upload uh, upload those uh, which may take away the need for uploading the flash lectures. In any case I've got a sample video here I downloaded uh, that'll show you how to use it. So. We'll scroll back up. Let's just upload the content here. We'll go to build content and then video. The screen's probably getting a little familiar now. It's just uh, the upload screen. So we'll name it sample video. After that, we can, uh, since we haven't actually uploaded this one at the content collection, we'll go ahead and just do browse my computer. And from here, I'll locate that file. Here it is, sample video. And we'll open. And you can set some, some functions here. I would say it's probably best to just leave it original for the dimensions. Uh, if you'd like it to auto start, that's an option. If you'd like it to loop, you can do that as well. So I'm just going to leave it as default. You can change those as you see fit. And we'll go ahead and submit and begin our upload. Alright, our upload is finishing. Alright, and it uses a uh, QuickTime video player. Um, I've not got that enabled on my browser right now. So, you can just download it straight away and it'll play within the browser like this. This is the sample video. I'm not too sure what it is. I just found it online. Apparently a large rabbit of some sort. In any case, we can see our video is playing just fine within the browser and it has added it to the bottom here on sample video. An alternative solution to using uh, the mp4 files is you could upload them to your YouTube account. I'm not going to go over how to upload a, a YouTube video. There's, there's plenty of information on that uh, on YouTube itself. Uh, in any case, we'll just approach this as if you had already uploaded the video to YouTube and in, in that case uh, you're already ready to add it to the course sites. I'm just going to get rid of this warning. And we say we wanted to add a YouTube video, you go to build content, and it's already got a YouTube video uh, option that we can utilize. Go ahead and select that. And within here, you will select the, uh, you'll type in your URL for your video file that you've already uploaded. In this case, I've already got one ready that we're using in our course, so I'll go ahead and enter that in. Hit enter, and it'll query YouTube and find that video. So in this case, it's how does HL7 work? So. Uh, this is the video we in fact want, so we'll go ahead and hit select. And it automatically adds everything to it. It pulls all the metadata from the video itself, so it fills in the majority of everything. Duration, uh, who created it, when it came on, and the URL, the title, and a screenshot. So the options are all pretty straightforward. Uh, you can show the YouTube URL if you'd like. There's really no reason to. Um, in any case, all these are, options are fine, so we'll go ahead and submit that and it'll create it. Again, it'll add it to the bottom of our course. And here it is. How does HL7 work? Uh, to use these, you just hit watch video and begin playing. So how exactly does this HL7 stuff work? Pretty straightforward. In any case, that is how you add any of the ONC materials to your video, or excuse me, to your course. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and get in touch with us. And that's it.